In this lesson, we're going to examine one type of market failure known as positive externalities of production. Now, if you're studying microeconomics and the unit on market failure, you've probably already learned about negative production externalities, possibly negative and positive consumption externalities. Positive externalities of production might be the least common type of externality that exists in markets. And there's a very good reason for that, which we'll be talking about a little bit later in this lesson. Before we get into our graphical analysis and discuss some examples of goods that create positive production externalities, let's give a simple definition first. A positive externality of production exists when the production of a good or service creates spillover benefits that help a third party not involved in the market transaction. When we refer to third parties in our market failure unit, we might be referring to certain individuals. So this could be individuals. It could be groups of people. It could also include the environment or the ecosystem. So now I want to explain my previous statement that positive production externalities are some of the most unusual or rare types of externalities that exist. The reason for this is certainly the fact that firms, private businesses producing a good or service do not try and never want to externalize any of the benefits of their production. Firms are profit maximizers. They want to charge consumers for the benefits that their goods or services provide. It would be very unusual for a firm to produce something that helped people who didn't pay for it. Therefore, positive externalities of production are not nearly as common as negative externalities of production. Externalizing benefits sounds like a good way to lose money. Therefore, firms try not to create many positive externalities of production. Let's talk about some examples of goods or services that create positive externalities of production. These are some that I like to use in my classes. One example you could use is medical research. For example, malaria research or research into HIV and AIDS. Clearly, if a cure for HIV, AIDS, or malaria could be developed, society as a whole would benefit, not just the firm or the individuals that are able to acquire that treatment. Because society as a whole would benefit, not just those who receive the treatment, we could say that medical research of certain types creates positive externalities of production. Another example I commonly use is tree farms. Trees are a product that can be harvested and sold. However, trees also serve environmental functions such as capturing CO2, carbon dioxide, from the atmosphere. So in fact, when a private company plants a tree farm, it's going to benefit not just the firm and the companies that buy the wood from that farm, but the environment as a whole, as there will be less carbon dioxide in the atmosphere as a result. Another example I'd like to use is sports stadiums. Assume, for example, that an NFL team is considering building a new stadium in a city in the United States. The cost of building a stadium is extremely high, but the benefits of building the stadium are not only going to be enjoyed by the team itself, but to some extent by the community in which the stadium is built. So you can say there are external benefits enjoyed by a city in the form of economic development when a sports stadium gets built. So one thing that all of these examples have in common is that they may be under provided by the free market because of the external benefits enjoyed by a third party in the case of each of these goods such goods may be under provided by the free market since the benefits are shared by society as a whole not just the private producers and consumers so let's choose one of these examples of goods that create positive externalities of production and do a graphical analysis in our graph on the right. First, we've got our typical supply and demand diagram. Instead of putting price in the vertical axis, I've put benefits and costs. Since in the analysis of market failures, we prefer not to look so much at price as we do the social benefits and social costs of the production of a good. So let's assume that the demand for this good represents both the marginal social benefit and the marginal private benefit. In other words, there are no externalities of consumption. Supply, on the other hand, represents only the marginal private cost of production. In the case of a positive externality of production, we're going to see that there is a social cost that lies below the private cost curve. So I can assume that the private costs of providing the good that we're going to examine here are very high, but because the good creates spillover benefits for society, we can say that the social cost or the marginal social cost is less than the private cost. We'll explain what that means more in just a moment. 
Knowing that private producers and consumers will achieve an equilibrium at the intersection of supply and demand in the long run, we can assume that the equilibrium quantity of the good we're analyzing here, we'll call this QE, is determined by the intersection of supply and demand and the equilibrium price as well. So what's an example of a good that creates a positive externality of production? We're going to look at here tree farms. The supply and marginal private cost curve represents the cost to the companies that plant the tree farms. You can see that the tree farms are relatively costly compared to the cost to society as a whole. Let's have a closer look at the situation experienced in this market at the quantity of QE. We want to look at how the marginal social costs of tree farms compare to the marginal social benefits of tree farms. So I'm going to go up to my MSC curve above QE and draw a dotted line over here. And this point on my vertical axis represents the marginal social costs. Then I'm going to go up to my marginal social benefit curve, which is found by going up to the equilibrium point and over. And I can see that the marginal social benefit of QE tree farms being provided by the free market is greater than the marginal social cost. Now we've learned earlier on in this course that the socially optimal or the allocatively efficient level of output in a market is where MSB equals MSC. However, in this case, we can see that the social benefit exceeds the marginal social cost, meaning resources are under allocated towards tree farms in this case. To find the socially optimal quantity of tree farms that society should have if all of the social benefits are accounted for in the production of tree farms, including their benefits to the atmosphere in the form of CO2 capture, we have to go along our MSB curve and along our MSC curve until we get to what we call the socially optimal quantity. This is QSO. And we can see that at that quantity, the benefits to society derives from the last tree farm planted equal the costs imposed on societies. We can see that MSB equals MSC. We can now explain the relationships between private benefits and social benefits and private costs and social costs. When it comes to benefits in a positive externality diagram, there is no difference between marginal private benefit and marginal social benefit. So the demand curve represents the marginal private benefit and the marginal social benefit. The reason for this is there are no consumption externalities. In our tree farm example, we can't really say that consuming products made out of wood or paper creates positive externalities. Rather, it is the growing of the trees themselves that create positive externalities. So that explains why the supply and marginal private cost curves are greater than the marginal social cost. The cost of actually planting these tree farms is greater than the cost that society experiences due to the fact that planting tree farms creates external benefits. So we can say the private costs are higher than the social costs due to the fact that there are external benefits. In other words, there are negative external costs. In other words, benefits from producing the good. Moving down, we can now compare our equilibrium quantity of QE to our socially optimal quantity of QSO. And what we see is that in the case of a positive externality of production, the socially optimal quantity is greater than the equilibrium quantity. In other words, the free market equilibrium. This is to say that resources are under allocated towards the production of a good with positive externalities. Now, when we studied negative externalities of production and consumption, we saw that there was a loss of total welfare arising from the level of production achieved in the free market. In the case of a positive externality, however, we don't call this a welfare loss. What we have instead is an area of potential welfare gain. How much better off would society be if more tree farms were produced? There would be more CO2 absorbed from the atmosphere. There would be more areas of land covered in beautiful trees rather than parking lots or shopping malls. So I'm going to shade the area of potential welfare gain on this graph. The increase in total welfare in the market that society would enjoy if output of tree farms were at QSO instead of QE is represented by the purple triangle. In other market failure graphs, we might have called this the deadweight loss, but in this graph, we call this the potential welfare gain. So this represents the increase in societal welfare that would be enjoyed if output occurred at the socially optimal level, QSO. 
So in the case of any of these examples of positive externalities here, society would be better off if more of the good were produced than what is achieved in the free market. Medical research is underprovided by the free market because of the positive externalities that arise from its production. Tree farms are underprovided by the free market because they provide environmental benefits that cannot be charged for by the producers of trees. Sports stadiums are another example. Cities enjoy some of the benefits of having sports stadiums in the form of local economic development and jobs created in industries other than that which actually builds the stadium and provides jobs in the sports industry itself. So these goods would all be underprovided by the free market. That brings us down to the final part of our lesson here, which is possible government interventions to solve the market failure or to at least mitigate the market failure of positive externalities of production. When studying negative externalities, we talked about how government could impose taxes or limits or require producers to acquire permits in order to produce a good that is overproduced by the free market. Some possible government interventions to increase the output of a good that creates a positive externality include subsidies to producers or government provision or other incentives for private firms to increase their output, perhaps by lowering the costs of production. This could include tax breaks, for example. So which of these goods here are often subsidized by the government? Obviously, medical research is an example of a good that is subsidized by government. If it weren't for government spending on malaria and HIV AIDS research, then the world would be much further away from achieving a cure or treatments for these deadly diseases. Private individuals who decide to use their land to grow tree farms are eligible for tax breaks in some countries. That acts just like a subsidy. Sports stadiums, now this is a very controversial one. Cities all over America and in other parts of the world spend hundreds of millions of dollars a year subsidizing private sports teams in the construction of their stadiums. Well, the argument is often that these stadiums provide jobs in other industries in the city. They provide economic development to the city. They improve neighborhoods that might be older or dilapidated. So there are external benefits enjoyed by those not directly involved in the production or consumption of the good. That is the defining characteristic of a positive externality of production. Graphically, we can see that the equilibrium free market quantity is less than the socially optimal quantity because the private cost is higher than the social cost due to the negative external costs, which is another way of saying the external benefits arising from the production of the good. Here we go.